everyone, and thank you for joining me for another edition of the OTRS Central Q&A here on said OTRS Central, where remember, it's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Thanks for tweeting your questions out. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so before. You, you will enjoy it, maybe, perhaps. I don't know. Let's go ahead and get started, though. Lots of great questions in the future. If you want to ask questions and have them answered and hear your name, called on this video and mark out for yourself and who wouldn't i'm happy to help you do that uh then you need to follow otr central on twitter and then usually every friday or so i'll ask for questions and then you respond at that time wrestling ramble kicks us off i've been on his show a couple of times you should check out his channel and subscribe thoughts on the rumors of sasha banks versus trish stratus at wrestlemania 34 um i didn't know these were real rumors is this just spinning off of the one spot at the rumble it would seem to be a bit of a stretch and again i haven't really looked that deeply at the dirt sheets this past week to see um if there was any bread to this so to speak i don't see it because you're already going to do what maybe charlotte versus oscar for the smackdown women's title you're going to probably do what naya versus alexa uh for the raw women's title so that's already two women's matches Rousey's going to be on the Mania card somewhere, so that's a third match involving women, probably her and Stephanie McMahon in some configuration, probably a tag match. I'm not sure that the WWE has enough space on the card for a fourth match involving uh, a woman. Now, they could, and that could be totally wrong, but if you put Sasha and Trish on there, that means one of your um, women's title matches probably ends up on the pre-show, and I don't know that you want to put them on the pre-show. And nor do I feel like they deserve to be on the pre-show. They don't. So, I, I don't see it. I don't think there's a really any muster behind this. I don't know where even this came from, honestly. Uh, Brian Walmer, what did you think of Barbed Wire Massacre 3? And what do you think of CZW in general? I'll be honest, Brian. I have no clue what Barbed Wire Massacre 3 is, was. Um, so, I have no thoughts, no opinions on it. CZW in general, the best way I'll put it. I feel like it's them trying to rip off ECW without any of the appeal or charm, and it's just not my flavor. Other people like it cool for them, just not for me. Just really not for me. Although, from what I understand over the years, they've been one of the most notorious flaggers of the Botchamania videos, which is just punk stuff. Let's be better than that, shall we? Let's try to be more positive, and that includes making fun of ourselves at times. I have no problem with people making fun of me and making fun of myself. I feel like I'm still the most qualified to make fun of myself. So they should lighten up a little. Adam Fornwalt, on a scale of 1 to 10, how successful will Ronda Rousey be? I'm trying to be really positive here. I feel like the high-end ceiling, where maybe the ceiling is the roof, might be a six. I don't know if she has it. Doesn't mean she doesn't. Doesn't mean she can't develop it. Doesn't mean she won't get it. But when you see her so far, every impression I've gotten is she tries too hard. And, and not that that's a bad thing, because at least she cares. And it's one of these things where she clearly loves it and enjoys it. But there is a difference between being a fan and being a performer in it um, and being an effective one at that. Mm. I have my concerns. That's all I'll say right now. I have real legitimate concerns, I feel. Um, I don't know. So I'll say at the high end, 6 of 10, low end, 3 of 10. Kieran Chase. What do the Cavs need to do to turn around their season? I don't know if they are going to turn around their season. <clears throat> because any trade that they make probably involves dumping people and who's going to want to take on some of what they have, whether it's an Isaiah Thomas or a Kevin Love or a Tristan Thompson or what have you. I don't see where DeAndre Jordan really honestly makes that much of a difference. Uh, there's just a lot of issues with that team and the construction of that team. And everybody except LeBron James will take blame for it when you know deep down LeBron James is the general manager of the Cleveland Cavaliers. He is the guy that deserves a lot of the blame for it. And he's a tremendous player. I mean, he's an all-time great. He is still the dude in the NBA. But 
just because you like certain dudes doesn't mean it's the best configuration of players to have around you. And they have a lot of guys that do the same thing, and it's an old roster that's horrible defensively, and I just don't see where they're going to get better in those areas. So I don't think they're going to turn it around. I'd be stunned, absolutely stunned, if this team made it to the NBA Finals. Um, the Wrestle Gamer. Are there any other YouTubers or wrestling reviewers you watch? Uh, for a long time, the answer honestly was no, because I was like, I'll just focus on myself and focus on what I do with this channel, and that's good enough. In reality, over the past few months, while I don't watch a lot of other people consistently, I will check out a video here, a video there, a video here, a video there. Um, I will say this, is that I don't feel like there is a ton of need for me to watch a bunch of other people because so many of the viewpoints, so many of the opinions, so many of the presentations in terms of how uh, commentary videos and reviews are done feel really the same to me. So I feel like for the most part, if I've watched one, I've watched most, if not all. So <clears throat> not a not a lot. I do try to check out, like when the big shows come up, I try to see, you know, what did so-and-so say, what did so-and-so say, what did so-and-so say, what did so-and-so say, just to kind of see what the vibe in the room is, just to see what people are talking about, what people are commenting on other people's videos. So I'm trying to start to get better about that and take more time to do that and will continue to do so. If that is that you asking me to watch your channel? No. Michael Corvin. You talked about before, instead of doing a drinking game during Raw, that we should do some type of push-up or sit-up game during Raw. Uh, how would that actually work? Um, every time there's a commercial during a match, maybe you would do uh, 10 sit-ups. Every time Corey Graves flipped from uh, heel to face in his commentator and face to heel, that would be 10 push-ups each. Um, let's see here. Every time Michael Cole underwhelms with his emotion, maybe you could do a combination of 10 sit-ups and 10 push-ups. Yeah. Every time... <clears throat> Every time Roman is in one of the featured segments, either the opening of the show, the one-hour, two-hour crossover main events, or the actual main event of the show, maybe that's 25 sit-ups. I don't you know, we we can figure it out. Maybe we should try it sometime, like legitimately. That it's a way to uh, take something and not only maybe have some fun with, but have some fun in a different way and accomplish a more positive goal for a lot of us. Because I don't know about you, but for me, I I'm trying to get back into shape, and it's easier said than done. And sometimes the motivation is not always the best. So it would be nice to have some type of raw drinking game to get rid of the old schleg gut. I'm embarrassed. I'm not even 40 yet, and I got this little freaking German Goyer starting to come out, and it never used to be there. I hit the scale, and whereas it used to be even a couple of years ago, like 185, 190, and I could live with that. Now I'm at 215. I feel like a moo moo. Mm -hmm, is what I feel like. So we should try it someday, though, for sure. I think it would be fun uh, and exhausting. So exhausting. Pillar to post. Joe White, what's going on? What would be so wrong with Ronda Rousey going to NXT first? Mm, he already debuted her on the main roster, so it would seem kind of weird to have her debut in the main event of the Royal Rumble and then send her down to NXT. That said, from a performance aspect, from being able to work on your craft and work on yourself as a performer, with very little pressure, NXT would be ideal. But unfortunately, the thing is, for the WWE, they're kind of in a catch-22, where I know you're going to talk about they do pay her a ton of money that shouldn't matter. It kind of does, because you want to be able to get some return on that investment very quickly. So on the one hand, it would be great and ideal to send her to NXT first. I just don't know that it's incredibly realistic. And I can't fault the WWE for not wanting to do so, because... They can put her in spots. Like if they do that tag match we're talking about at Mania. They can limit what she does. They can prepare her very well. Accentuate the things they're going to do. And mask the other stuff that she's not quite ready for yet. And that might be the way you get by the first couple of times. It might be six months to a year before she's ready for a real singles match. And that's okay. Especially if she's going to be there for a couple of years. Hug life for life. Guys and girls with the future potential to enter the breakfast club. At some point in time, the Schleg Daddy's got to come up with some new material. 
The Breakfast Club is the Breakfast Club, and they are legends in their own minds and mine, and many of yours, but we gotta figure out some new shtick, some new material. Because we can't just keep adding different people to the Breakfast Club. We need to create new factions, like, you know, the Click became the Breakfast Club. Um, so, I don't know if anybody has any future potential. Just saying. The Phenomenal One. Who are the Breakfast Club women of WWE? Ah. Uh, go again with the breakfast club reference that's my own fault but that said probably what they're four horsewomen the, the charlottes the sashas the baileys the becky lynch's um reality charlotte definitely alexa clearly sasha it feels like those three for sure the charlotte and alexa have the titles and have had them multiple times and Sasha Banks always seems to get featured very, very strongly, very, very well. So, definitely those three. Swag Pizza 27. If Michael Jordan was a wrestler, would he use the baseball slide or the shining Washington wizard as a finisher? We're not going to do this right now. We're going to be positive. We're going to be positive. His finisher would be the slam dunk. His finisher would be, I saved the universe from the basketball playing aliens called the Monstars. It would be the, I never played baseball and I never played basketball for the Washington Wizards. That would be the name of the finisher. It's a tongue twister for most of you, mere mortals, but not for me. I'm going to be positive. Positive, positive, positive. Happy, happy, happy. Don't let them get under your skin. Don't, don't let them do it. Now, it's just an attempt to try and rile me up, and it's not going to work, I promise you. Chrysler Official. If Cena ever knocks up Nikki, are we expecting it's a daughter? Would we expect it to be anything less or anything else? Clearly, daughter would be the runaway favorite here. Like, if you're talking about Vegas odds and the kitty... The kitty would be like 10. You have to put down $100 to win 110 because the odds would be so great as a Breakfast Club member. You make daughters, he would make a daughter. Midnight New Mosaic. Should it be Brock Lesnar versus Braun Strowman instead of Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar? Um, just because we might not be huge on Reigns versus Lesnar at Mania doesn't mean at this point in time, based off the way things broken down, that it necessarily should be Strowman versus Lesnar at Mania either. Strowman's had multiple opportunities in three ways and four ways and, you know, one-on-one -on -one match with Lesnar. He's had plenty of opportunities too. So, um, I don't know if it should be Brock versus Strowman. If anything, I would rather see Batista versus Lesnar. That would intrigue me a whole hell of a lot more because you could go back to something that dates back to their OVW days. Um, you've never really went there before. That would be incredibly intriguing to me, Batista versus Lesnar. Rafael Gonzalez, could The Miz have been a successful mid-card star during the Attitude Era? I don't know if he was over the top enough. I don't know if he was larger than life enough and flamboyant enough as a character to be a mid-card star in the WWF during the Monday Night Wars and the Attitude Era. What he screams out to me, and I mean this is no insult at all, is Sunday Night Heat stud. That's what I think of. That first or second match type of guy that could be good for what he does could be in the featured matches and segments on shows like Sunday Night Heat or Remember the Old Shotgun Saturday Night. That's what The Miz would have been back then to be. And that's fine. He still would have made a hell of a lot of money and would have been a star. Probably would have been a big, bigger star in that role at that time than he would be for what he is now. Uh, Murphy, when Taker fights Cena at Mania, who should win? Um, the WWE at the box office probably wins. Uh, it's tough because it, it's, again, it feels like one of those lose-lose type of situations. Because why have Taker lose to Reigns, then come back the next year and wrestle Cena and beat him? Why have Taker come back just to lose to Cena as well? It, it's really, really tough. Um, from a personal standpoint, 
if Taker is going to wrestle, then this would hopefully be his last one. He should get the honor of being able to win his last WrestleMania. Because it's not like Cena's going to be around full-time much longer anyways. He's not even really around full-time now. It's the Costanza. Where do you see WWE by WrestleMania 40? Probably doing it in a major media market in the U.S., uh, such as New York or Los Angeles, or perhaps internationally somewhere like London. Um, still filling up WrestleMania's venue, selling it out. Um, in terms of other things I see for them by WrestleMania 40, that's what, six years from now? Ooh, I don't think they'll be on the USA Network anymore. I think they will have challenges at that time because they will be even more removed from the glory days of the company. Uh, a lot of the guys that they're featuring in big spots now may very well be winding down if not done. Um, so I think they'll still be profitable. I st still think they'll be viable, but we might not recognize them six years from now. We, we really might not. A Lord Hater, why is Booker T the only one to have been allowed to be a real black guy in WWE? I don't think that's totally false. I think that's totally false. Like after the initial stubbing of the toe with Farouk, I think they allowed Farouk to be a real black guy. Did you not take him seriously as the leader of the Nation of Domination and then later on in the APA? Yes, you get to the end of the career when he's doing, damn! And that's kind of joke and everything else. There was a period of time where he was taken seriously. I feel like Ahmed Johnson was taken seriously, was he not? Um, especially once they started to push Mark Henry a little bit in the mid-2000s um, when he went on a heel run. I mean, he got a WrestleMania match, a casket match, didn't he, against Taker? Feels like they're taking him pretty seriously. Because um, I wouldn't say Booker T was the only one. Mm -mm. I wouldn't say that at all. There are plenty of others that fit into the category of what you're talking about, and we know I completely agree with that. But he wasn't the only one. Uh, Nick Baster. Why is WWE stock so high right now? Is this a bubble? Yes, it's a bubble. It's a bubble that's been created um, by things totally unrelated to WWE. There are market forces at play, specifically stock market forces, where investors got really excited about the potential of what the uh, Trump and Republican tax cuts were going to do. Because ultimately, from a shareholder standpoint, it was going to be an incredible boon to them. Um, so they got even more heavy into the market trying to buy up stock in order to ensure they were getting more shares and um, bigger dividend amounts. Especially when they know as corporations start to um, get this money, they are not just automatically going to reinvest it. Like my company raised their minimum wage to $15.00. Uh, but how did they pay for that? They paid for that by taking away our annual bonuses. So it's robbing Peter to pay Paul. That's all it is. That's all it is. And we can't be foolish enough to think that companies that had billions upon billions of dollars already in the banks um, are going to sit there and magically just invest significantly um, just for the good of the economy, good of the country, uh, just for the good of the economy? Nah, why would they? And even if people bring up other examples talking about like Apple, Apple have been complaining for years about they had so much money they didn't know what to do with it. They just chose to finally use it. I don't see where a, a tax break made that much of a difference there. Then you have somebody like Walmart who's talking about raising their minimum employee wage up to $11 an hour. Well, that's great, except your competitor Target did that about a year before, so you're really just answering your competition it's unrelated to the tax plan. And in a competitive world, you had to do that in order to be able to keep up, in order to be able to get a certain level of people and employee and so on and so forth. But then in order to pay for that and in order to pay for the bonuses you were bragging about paying people, you close 63 Sam's Club stores, which in and of itself, Sam's Club, not a monster profit maker, but was still profitable as an entity, as a corporation in and of itself. So... When you think about why the stock market raised so much, it's because of factors such like the economy had some good aspects and good parts going forward and has for several years. Speculation, 
driving up the price, just like we had about a decade ago with commodities markets, specifically with oil prices, speculation, driving up futures commodity prices, driving them up and up and up and up and up, and eventually that bubble bursts. And it's the same thing happening here. So that's why WWE stock is so high, and that's why I feel like Vince McMahon uh, was so excited to be able to sell the 33 million shares of stock or so that he did, because he only had to sell 33 million of them, as opposed to if this he had tried to do this Alpha Entertainment LLC business a year or two ago, when the market was not nearly as overinflated and overvalued because of the speculation by investors driving up the value of the markets uh, beyond what the real value actually is, he would have had to have sell, sold two to three times that number of shares in the company in order to get that same return. Um, so it's a bubble. It will burst. It will burst very quickly. Uh, Victor Tran, who will God's opponent at WrestleMania be? It feels like the recent rumors about him and Stephanie versus Rousey and a partner seems like the most logical option, which would probably tie into Angle, especially if they can't get The Rock. Uh, Chase Holland, thoughts on Batista's movie career and if it's better than Cena's. Uh, to be fair, Batista's had several more years of a head start than Cena. Uh, Batista was able to attach himself to Marvel and the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise, which is going to bring him into the Avengers franchise. Uh, so clearly at this point in time, his career is better than Cena's. It is uh, funny that most of the stuff they do with Cena uh, tends to be animated. The Pistachios, Elephant, Ferdinand, the Bumblebee movie. Um, and it's like they don't want to put his real face on camera. That's, that's sad. But, you know, five years from now, where can Cena be in the movie world? Remains to be seen. Uh, McLovin, your opinion on Vince Russo? Um... <clears throat> Pass. Now, I will answer this as positively as I can be. I think Vince Russo, at times by certain people, gets diminished too much for some of the things he did do to help professional wrestling move along and turn a corner. I also think at times he gets too much credit by others, and specifically from himself, for the things that he's done. Um... I, I feel like in a lot of ways it's it's funny, it's ironic. Him and Jim Cornette are incredibly similar in entirely different packaging in entirely different ways. It's kind of like the U.S.'s version of the Republican and Democratic parties. Now you may have a preference or an allegiance or this or that or a belief that one's better than the other. Uh, but the real truth is, is more often than not, those two political parties take completely divergent paths to ultimately end up at the same result, which is not necessarily a positive result for the American people that vote these uh, Republicans and Democrats into position in the first place. Uh, when you look at Cornette and Russo, they are two guys that want credit for what they did and deserve credit for what they did, but refuse to take any blame or accountability for anything that they do bad. Sometimes I look at them and I'm like, you're two grown men, grow the hell up. One of you didn't sleep with the other guy's wife. You didn't rape the other one's daughter or son. You didn't kill your dog. didn't do any of that. It's grow up. And it really is. On both of their parts. It's really kind of sad and pathetic. Grow up. Y'all both are in your 50s. Get over it. And that's the real truth. Get over it. But the, again, they are very similar in a lot of ways. They want all the credit and they always want to be kind of perceived as being right in everything, but they refuse to take any responsibility or accountability for every, anything that ever goes wrong. It's always an excuse. It's always a diversion. It is always a blame somebody else. So they are really, really similar if you think about it. It's just like it's New York versus Tennessee. Doesn't matter if the result is the same. Just saying. Mr. Pio one. How come when I started watching you, I didn't train, and now I could bench 440 pounds 14 times? Without video, it didn't happen. I need proof. Number two, apparently these videos have been incredibly inspirational to you, and that is awesome. If you're giving me legit stuff here, sir, and I have no reason to doubt you, I would just like validation or proof, I salute you. That's awesome. Keep it up. Well, this has been a positive experience for me, and I hope it was for you. 
Thanks to all of you that tweeted your questions and sat through all of this and watched it. I shall see you later.